Hello and welcome to this webinar presented by BioRed Technical Support on using the BioPlex Manager NP software for MagPix. My goal is to get you started multiplexing now. My name is Maribeth Wirt and I'm a Senior Technical Support Consultant for BioRed. One of my specialty areas is the BioPlex and MagPix instruments and their software. I hope you will find this webinar informative. We will be discussing the following topics. What is the BioPlex Manager NP software? Preparing the MagPix to run an assay. Setting up the protocol. This includes selecting the panel or analytes. Setting up the plate. Selecting standards and entering the standard values. Starting and monitoring the run. And exporting the data to BioPlex Manager and analyzing it. We will also cover some actions that will still need to be done in the exponent software. BioPlex Manager MP software provides an automated instrument management interface to the underlying exponent software. BioPlex Manager MP automates installation, maintenance, and helps with eliminating protocol setup errors. It also provides real-time monitoring of performance, automated troubleshooting, and seamless data export to BioPlex Manager 6.1. Let's start using the BioPlex Manager MP software. When you open the BioPlex Manager MP software, it opens on the maintenance page so you can prepare the MagPix to run your assays and make sure it's calibrated for optimal performance. On the left side of the page, there are three buttons to take you directly to the three main performance functions in the software. These buttons appear in each section of the software, and the maintenance section, where we are now, is where you run your startup, shutdown, calibration, verification, probe height adjustment, and other maintenance routines. In this column, you select the routines to run. At the top of the column, under the yellow bar is the recommended routine to be run at this time. We always recommend running the daily startup when the MagPix is turned on for the day. In the Select Routine section under the blue bar, you will actually select the maintenance routines to run. The four most common routines, Startup, Enhanced Maintenance, Shutdown, and Prime, are listed next to radio buttons you can click to select. The daily startup includes a calibration and or verification as needed based on the MagPix's status. Calibration and verification ensure the MagPix is correctly detecting and sorting the beads and targets. Calibration should be run once a week and verification once a day or each day the system is used. Underneath the radio button is a drop-down menu of additional routines that can be run with the startup or run separately as needed for maintenance or troubleshooting. In this demonstration, we will run the daily startup, which in this instance will include both calibration and verification. The next column ind ind illustrates which reservoirs or wells need to be filled and what each needs to be filled with for the selected routines. This updates as you select your routines. You can see that if I select Wash Between Plates, the indicated reagents change. If you're not sure what a particular routine does or what it contains, underneath the reagent block image are details on what reagents are needed to run the routine and what exactly the routine does. The final section contains information on the current calibration and verification status, available calibration and verification kit lots, and access to the routine to adjust the probe height. Here you can see during the simulated MagPix session, there is no current status information for calibration, verification, or the fluidics. In this section, you will select which calibration and verification kit lots you will be using. This is necessary because there are lot-specific files to ensure the correct calibration and verification data are used. If you have a new calibration or verification kit, you can import the lot-specific data using the Import Kit button. 
Simply insert the CD that comes with the kit into the computer CD holder and click the Import Kit button. The last section lets you adjust the probe height. You will need to do this if you change or clean the probe for any reason or if you intend to use a new type of plate. Simply click the Adjust Probe Height button and insert the probe height adjustment plate, reagent block, and well strip as indicated. Then click Adjust Probe Height. Now that the routines have been selected, let's watch what happens when I click Start. You can see that the routine log will show you what step is currently being run from the selected routines and how long the estimated runtime will take for all the routines you have selected. Since this is an emulation mode, it won't actually take this estimated 10 minutes to run. You can see how the routine log does update as it goes through the steps. And in the reagent block, you can see how each section of the reagent block flashes as it is accessed. Other information on this display include the information at the bottom of the screen. In the status bar, you can confirm if the MagPix is connected to the computer, toggle the plate heater on and off, check for any alerts, and what the current run status is. If there are any alerts, you'll see this flag change to yellow, and a number will indicate the number of alerts that are pending. To view these, simply click on the flag to see what the alerts are. You'll note that under the reagent block, after you start a calibration or verification, it will provide the specific lot number information from the kits you have selected. Once the selected routines are complete, there will be a pop-up window with a notification that your routines have been completed. You can see now in the status fields here that the calibration, verification, and fluidics have all passed their tests and the MagPix is now ready to run. The next step is to set up your run protocol. You can set up your run protocol while the maintenance routines are running or once they have finished. You can also set up a protocol while the MagPix is offline and save it to run later. To create your protocol, click on the Run Create Protocols button on the left side of the screen. In this window, you will see three main sections. The plate setup, which will show which wells the MagPix will collect data from and the sample type in each. The bead map, which shows the bead region selected in the assay. And the assay panel, which lists the data results as they are collected. The first step for a new run is to create a protocol for your run. To start this, go to the upper left corner and click on the New button. If you would like to run a previously saved protocol, click on the New From button, select the protocol to modify or rerun. So let's create a new protocol. When you click on the New button, you'll see a pop-up window which will walk you through the steps to create your protocol. The first step is to select your analytes so the MagPix knows what regions to display the data from. While the MagPix does record data appearing in any region, limiting the display to the actual targets in the assay will help prevent low bead errors. There are three different methods you can use to select your analytes. Which one to use depends on whether you have a pre-made BioRad kit, a custom BioRad kit, or a non-BioRad kit. First, let's look at using one of BioRad's kits. In the window, go to the Assay Panel drop-down menu and select your kit from it. The drop-down menu will list all of BioRad's off-the-shelf kits, as well as any custom panels you have created. In this example, we'll select 
the Human Group 1 Cytokine 27 Plex Kit. You can see it will list all of the analytes in the kit, as well as the bead regions associated with each analyte. If you're running a custom assay that only contains a subset of these analytes or combines analytes from different panels, you'll need to create a new custom panel. You can do this by clicking on the Manage Assay Panels button at the top of the page. You'll see a new pop-up window, again listing all of the BioRad kits. Check the boxes next to the kit or kits you're using analytes from. In this example, I'll be creating a custom kit using only some of the analytes from the Human Cytokine Group 127 Plex assay. After checking the box next to the panel, click on the New From button, which brings up a new window listing the analytes in the kit. Name your new panel, and then click on the analytes you want to delete from the listed one if they aren't in your new panel. To do this, you can simply click on the line and you can control click to select multiple analytes. When you only have the analytes you want on your new panel, click OK. Your new assay panel is now listed under the assay panel drop down menu. If you're using a non-BioRed kit or beads you conjugated yourself, you can create your custom panel by clicking on the New Assay Panel button. Again, give your panel a name, then enter the bead region and name for each of your analytes. Click OK to save the panel and then view it in the Assay Panel drop-down menu. For this demonstration, I will be using a saved panel called New Cytokine 8Plex. Once you've created or selected your panel, click on the Format, Pl Format Plate button. This is where you will set up your plate with the standards, controls, blanks, and unknown samples. Please remember that the MagPix will only collect data from the wells that are labeled. While the actual well labels can be changed after the run, the data will only be collected from identified wells. To label the plate, you have a set of tools across the top of the plate figure to help you. The first three toggle the autofill on and off and designate the direction the wells autofill. Next is a drop-down menu to specify the number of replicate samples you have. You can select from one up to eight. Next are the well designators for the sample type. Blank, Control, Standard, Unknown, and an Erase option to clear mislabeled wells. So let's set up a sample plate. First, we'll set up the standards. To do this, click on the Standards button, and then select two from the drop-down menu, since I plan to load the standards in duplicate. I want the software to autofill the data for me, so I'll select the direction I want my replicates to autofill. Now that I've selected these well labels, I'll just go ahead and highlight the wells I want my standards in and let the autofill do the hard work. You can see that the wells I selected have had the replicate number autofilled for me. We can follow the same process for the blanks controls, and unknown samples. Once you've labeled your plate, click on the Standards Info button. This will let you enter the standard values for your particular kit. If you're using a BioRed kit or previously saved lot information, you can go to the Standard Lots drop-down menu, which will show you the available standard lots. Select your lot of standards 
and the information will auto-populate. You can also set the dilution factor for your standards and which of your standards is the most concentrated. Since for this assay I have a four-fold dilution series for my standards, I selected a dilution factor of four and I have S1 as my most concentrated standard. If your lot information is not in the drop-down menu, you can click on New Standard Lot to enter your standard information. The panel you have selected will auto-populate the analyte list, and you just need to add the name for your standard lot, the expiration date, and the starting concentration for each of your targets. The Manage Standard Lot button will let you import new lot information from the lot profiles on the BioRad website. Once you've entered the analyte, plate, and standards information, click OK. You will now see your plate set up with the labeled wells, the bead map with the regions of your beads of interest highlighted, and the assay panel will list the wells you have samples in as well as the sample type in each well. Check to make sure your run setup is accurate, and then click Start to begin the run. A window will pop up prompting you to name your data file so the data will be automatically saved. You can also enter a plate ID if you are tracking one, the type of plate you are using, and any pre-run or post-run routines you want to run. There is also a checkbox that will have the run stop if you run into any wells with a low bead count. The reagent block image will show you what needs to be loaded onto the block to carry out any pre-run or post-run routines. Once the options in this window are set, click Run Protocol to start collecting data. Once again, since this is an emulation, the data collection is faster than it will be with an actual plate. As the MagPick starts collecting data, you can monitor the data as it is collected. First, in the plate setup, it will show you which wells have already been read, as well as the well that is currently being read. The well being currently read will have a flashing triangle in it. Wells that have already been read will either be green to indicate the data was collected without any problems, or yellow to indicate there was a problem with collection, such as low bead count. On the bead map, you can watch as the events are collected in each region. This will give you a quick visual confirmation that the beads are being read and that the beads are falling into the correct regions. There is a checkbox that will let you toggle between seeing single events or all events. Which view to use is a matter of personal preference. Finally, in the assay panel, you can see several data parameters from each well. It's automatically updated as each well is read, and you can view several data parameters. The default setup shows the fluorescent intensity from each well, the bead statistics column, and the bead region counts. The bead statistics columns show the total number of events collected in a well and how many of those events fell into the designated regions. The bead counts, which are indicated in parentheses, indicate the number of beads that were counted for each region in that well. If you do not want to see this information, you can toggle it off using the two buttons in the upper right hand corner of the panel. The button on the left controls the bead region counts, 
and the middle button controls the bead statistics. The button on the right will expand the assay panel to the full screen, and you have the full, same full screen option for the bead map. At the bottom of the screen, you have the same status bar as in the maintenance panel, showing if the MagPix is connected to the computer, what the plate heater temperature is, or if it's off. Any alerts, say from wells that collected a low bead count, and what the current status of the MagPix is. In this case, it's running the assay. You can walk away once the protocol is started, but this information is accessible here if you want to monitor for any problems during the data collection. Once the data have been collected, again, you'll get an alert that the protocol is complete. And you can export the data into Bioplex Manager for analysis. To do this, click on the Export Result button at the top of the page. You'll be prompted to save the data as a Bioplex Manager Results or RBX file. The default data file name is the name you provided in the Run window, plus the date and time the data were collected. Change the name if you like and save it to an appropriate folder on the computer hard drive. Once the data are exported, you'll be offered the option to just open it right away in Bioplex Manager for analysis. If you would like to analyze it later, just click No. Once the data file opens in Bioplex Manager, you can add more information to your data file. such as names for your unknown samples, and any dilutions if the samples were diluted. You can also enter control values if your assay has controls. You can check the standard, the data quality and the standard curve information looking at the concentrations and the standard curves. More details on how to do this data analysis will be covered in the next webinar in this series. Bioplex Manager and Data Pro Software. Streamline Multiplex Data Analysis, which is scheduled for mid May. While the Bioplex Manager MP software automates most of the functions in the underlying exponent software, there are some functions which still must be handled via exponent. These include setting alerts for the 6 and 12 month preventative maintenance checks and exporting log and troubleshooting files. To reset the preventative maintenance alerts in the exponent software, click on the admin tab and then schedule. On this page, you can set the start date, which is the date of the most recent PM the time the alert should be given, and the recurrence, which is how often the PM should be done and the alert issued. The instrument log and troubleshooting files may be requested by technical support for troubleshooting purposes. If they are needed, technical support will provide more detailed instructions on accessing them. In this webinar, we covered how to run maintenance routines to prepare the MagPix to run, Set up a protocol, including selecting analytes, the plate setup, and standards information, and exporting the results to Bioplex Manager for analysis. Thank you for attending this webinar on using Bioplex Manager MP software for MagPix. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact technical support at 1-800-424-6723, option 2, or email us at support at biorad.com.